Last Friday, when we did that exciting live show from the U.S. Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, one enterprising cadet, Sam from Iowa, pitched me on Micron, the big commodity semiconductor play that really isn't commodity anymore. Sam did a great job of outlining the bull thesis. Micron's two key products, DRAMs and flash chips, they seem likely to bottom next year. Maybe DRAM is actually bottoming a little bit slower than, than uh, flash, but the stock's extremely low valuation makes it too cheap to ignore. Darn thing selling for less than nine times next year's earnings estimates. I was impressed. But Micron, we know, wild trader. When the company reported at the end of September, they delivered some stellar results. Management's guidance for the next quarter, the one we're currently in, was viewed as tepid by some. Stock did get hurt from 48 down to 43, bottom to 42. Since then, working its way back up in a powerful semiconductor rally, which is making investors wonder if the sell-off might have been a mistake, me being one of them. So could Micron have more upside? Oh, wow. Let's dig deeper with Sanjay Marotra. He is the president and CEO of Micron Technology. Find out more about his company's doing where it's headed. Sanjay, welcome back. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you here. These are exciting times for Micron, a company I followed for 30 years. And it looks like to me, by the measurements that I follow, whether it be free cash flow orders, where we are in the cycle, this is a new Micron. It's one that can sustain any downturn and still be strong. And that's absolutely our goal. I mean, we are extremely focused on technology acceleration, new product introductions, and uh, accelerating our cost competitiveness in the marketplace as well. You're absolutely right. This is about new Micron. Very different. When you look at our fiscal year 2019, with such steep price declines right. in the industry, we produced actually the second best year in the 40-year <laughs> history of the company. Second best year for free cash flow as well and profits of the company. You came on our show and you announced that gigantic buyback. And I think a lot of people felt, except for a couple of us who were students of your work, that the buyback wasn't real. You were in there all the time, it turns out, in terms of the amount of stock you retired. So during fiscal year 2019, yes, we did buy back 2.7 um, billion of our stocks. Uh, we had free cash flow of 4.1 billion, so 65% of our free cash flow went toward the buybacks. Of course, in fiscal fourth quarter, our free cash flow was lowered right. because of you know the conditions in the marketplace with right. respect to the pricing, as well as us wanting to make sure that we continue to invest for the long term right. in terms of capex, clean room expansions, etc. But that season. When I looked at the following PCs, whether I speak to uh, Dion Weisler, who's my friend, he's now retired. Uh, when I look at Data Center, if I speak to Lisa Sue. When I look at cell phone, when I speak with Skyworks, I thought the number wasn't nearly as bad tonight as people think. I talk to Corvo and Qualcomm. I look at 5G and listen and read to your own uh, Sumit Sandana. I see every one of those businesses turning up big in, in uh, 2020. Absolutely. A calendar first quarter of 2020, we tend to experience seasonality in the first quarter. So, yes, I mean, you know, that quarter demand could be somewhat impacted. We have talked about, you know, China, perhaps some right. customers building some inventory right. in China. You know, exactly how that plays out, given the trade uncertainties, we have to see. And, you know, we have had certain shortages on our end as well in terms of supply side. Right. But Back then you've also said that you have the other side, too. But exactly. So now let's go look at the other side. When we go past calendar first quarter and we really look at the demand trends in the marketplace, 5G, like you said, right. you know, 2020, about 200 million plus smartphones with 5G will be sold. And 5G phones, with the immersive experience right. they provide, you know, it needs more DRAM memory in it. Mobile World Congress phones were announced with 12 gigabyte of DRAM, one terabyte of flash. So the trends, not just 5G, but certainly right. cloud, data center, AI applications, IoT, all point to increasing need for memory and storage. I need you to put in context what you just said, though, Sanjay. Uh, gigabyte, this is, you used to be four gigabyte. You're talking about then it was eight. Now you're talking about 12 gigabyte. That's a dramatic amount of intellectual property of Micron, much more than a lot of, of the even the bulls think. So memory has absolutely become essential right. in this data economy, right? right? And you cannot do without more memory right. because now compute has got to a point, communications with 5G have got to a point right. with low latency, IoT is providing a lot more data opportunities. So in data insights have to be drawn from that data, and where does that data live? It lives in the products that Micron makes. So yes, average capacities of DRAM mm -hmm. content in smartphones you know, continues to increase by approximately 25% on a year-over-year -year basis. When you look at 2018, uh, 2019 being about four gigabyte per right. smartphone on an average, 
2020 expected to be about 5 gigabyte right. on an average for smartphone. But same story applies in the data center as well. Okay. It's but I don't want to get, you know, look, I think that someone who's watching the show would say, Jim, you're very excited about 2020, but let's face it, we still have to deal with DRAM pricing, which is still going down. We have to do with NAND that may be good, and that you have to ask Sanjay, look, how can you really be so sure of DRAM prices, which is still, by the way, the majority of what you, of, of what you make, are still going lower? Why should we have any conviction to own the stock of Micron? So you're absolutely right that, you know, DRAM is continuing to be a competitive marketplace. Right. And I s talked about, we provided guidance for our fiscal Q1, and I provided you some color on calendar Q1 dynamic as well. But when I look beyond that, and that's what I think, you know, investors have to look at, that the long-term opportunity in our markets, right. really in my 40-year history, this is the best time ever for memory and storage. Long-term demand trends right. are absolutely secular in nature, and Micron in particular is a very different Micron in terms of how we are focused on ROI on our investments and driving technology and product portfolio right. expansion, meeting right. the customer's requirements. So we are different yeah. Micron than ever in the That's past. That's the line I like. More of a product company than we have ever been. A absolutely. Not we and not just about, about product. a product company. Now talking about product leadership company. At Micron Insight on October 24th, we announced 3D Crosspoint products, right. world's fastest solid state drive using 3D Crosspoint. Yes, early days of 3D Crosspoint will take you know, right. some time for opportunity to build up, but it points to our focus on absolute leadership in our markets. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on. I, it's a privilege to have you on the show. You are probably the most important person describing the semiconductor industry today. That is Sanjay Marotri, the president and CEO of Micron Symbols MU. You know I've liked the stock very much because it's not the same old Micron that I traded in the 90s where I was always worried every minute that we owned it.